thought today would be a good day for a trunk show. I'm gonna try and do things a little bit differently today so that I can show you a bunch of quilts, maybe give you some inspiration, kind of how I use my quilts, how I display my quilts, where I put them all, because as a quilter, you know your collection kind of adds up. And the last thing you wanna do is to cram them into a closet where you're never gonna see them again, right? So come with me today. The quilts that I've made, the quilts that I keep on display, the ones that I rotate out and Anything else I think of teaching you or showing you along the way? How's that sound? Great? All right, I'll see you in just a minute. Last week I showed you kind of more of an update YouTube focus slash sewing studio slash office. That's a lot to cram in a room. <laughs> And it's still a work in progress. It's always gonna be a work in progress. So, so yeah, today, let's go through some stuff. I wanna show you the quilts that I have in my sewing room, and then we will move on to the ones that I have outside of my sewing room and around my house and some of the projects that I'm working on right now. So right here, over in this corner, a lot of you saw this when I did the tour of my sewing room, and it is this gorgeous quilt right here. It is actually a pattern that I designed called Helix, and it is with one of my classes that I teach, and you learn step-by-step step how to make this amazing quilt. Um, look at the back of this quilt. Ah, isn't that fun? And you can see like the quilting detail on it right there as well. And um, for those of you who are asking, how do you have your quilt hung up that way, Kristen? How do you do that? This is it right here. So, I kind of wadded it up like accordion style, right? And I put a ribbon around the top. You can see that little orange bar right there. And then on the back side, y'all think that I'm so fancy and so like amazing, but like this is a curtain rod thing here. It's like a little loop and then it has a clip on the bottom of it. And then that's just a command hook. And then with the way that you position everything right there, it just covers it up and it just leaves this like beautiful like quilt hanging right here that just brings some color to this corner which would otherwise just be white bookcase, white door, this goes to the little half bath in here, and then right on the other side is the wardrobe which is also white. So it just brings a little bit of color to this corner, kind of draws your eye in, um, combines them in a way that makes this just a gorgeously fun eye-catching pattern and of course all of these fabrics are Alice in Glass and it's rainbow so it goes from like the reds down there to the oranges, yellows, greens, teals, blues and then eventually all the way up here on the side that's like still tucked up in that um, tie up there, it goes into purples. And then we're gonna go over to the other side where I have my quilt ladder. So this right here is the quilt ladder that I showed in that video. Now I had a lot of questions that were like, where'd you get your quilt ladder? Um, I asked my dad to make it for me. <laughs> that's it, it's a very simple project. Now I'm gonna show you another quilt ladder that I have and that one I made by myself and I haven't done anything to it yet. It's still just raw wood. I don't know if I'll stain it or if I'll paint it or if I'll just leave it the way that it is for right now. You can go to the stores and buy like the really expensive, really nice, like fancy ones or you can make it yourself on the cheap. And um, so that's what I did. I made it myself on the cheap. Now, I'm gonna talk about some of the quilts that I have on this ladder so that you can see them. Okay, here's one more picture of like the quilt ladder as a whole and how it looks from far away. So this is how I have them arranged. I have this quilt at the top. This is the quilt that I made with the Pioneer Woman fabric. I love to snuggle with this quilt. This The reason that it's on top is because I often take this one out while I'm in my room and when I'm like working on computer stuff. Like, can you see that crinkle texture in this quilt? Like it is absolutely amazing and it is so comfortable. Plus I love looking at like the stars cause those were kind of free handed with rulers. And, and then I have that one kind of off to the side just to give a little bit of like an asymmetric look to this ladder. And then this one I have stretched across the whole frame here. 
And this is my Cassiopeia quilt. I designed this pattern. That's why it's called Cassiopeia. And I love the fabrics that I used with it. It is a quilt pattern that goes with my modern quilting made easy class. And through that class, we walk through it step by step together through video tutorials. And I show you how to make this quilt. And then right here, you can see like the fun variegated thread that I used in the quilting, which I think just adds a little bit of zing to it. You know, like it, it's the little things that bring out like the most personality in the quilts. So that one I have stretched all the way across there. And I do like that quilt, but it, um, it's not as thin a batting as like the one above it, which is the pioneer woman one. So I use this one more like in the, the wintery time. Okay. And then down below it here, just to have some different colors while I'm filming, because this one you can see when I'm filming, is a jelly roll quilt. Quilt. I'll put a tutorial link in the up in the top corner there if you want to make a jelly roll quilt with me and do the whole tutorial. Super easy, super fun, really great beginner project, and also a really great project for somebody who just needs like a little bit of confidence, a little bit of a good, easy quilt project. There's some meandering, there's some straight lining, there's, uh, let's see what else is in here, more straight lining. Uh, I guess the other side has more, like this has some like waves and things that I was doing in here, some flowers, like um, there's everything on this quilt, there's some loops and stuff. I was just having a good time and I was not worried about perfection. And I think that's what I love about this because it shows progress. It shows that like, you know, I started out really bad and then by the end of it, I got better. So those are the ones that I keep on the quilt ladder for right now. They do change and they do, um, I do move them around some, but since I've redone my sewing room, those are the ones that stay on there. And then over in this corner, I have another quilt that hangs on the back of this ladder. This is another jelly roll quilt. And I, I did a very, simple pattern on this one that just has some cross hatching but then in the middle of the cross hatching where there's like this big open diamond area i was trying to going for a infinity symbol i don't think i quite got it because of the points on the end but that's what i was going for in between there all about sewing so this one is absolutely my quilt and i love it this is another one that i cuddle up with on the couch quite often um especially when i'm doing handwork and i just want to be like <laughs> crazy themed and like I want my sewing quilt I want to be sewing I want to be watching sewing on tv watching some youtube videos you know that's I I like this quilt it's really really fun oh boy okay I I don't know that I can get back far enough for you to see this exactly but that is my design board and this is the one that I have on there right now so hi side note uh are you one of those people that decides like I don't know three Two, two, three weeks ahead of time that like, hey, a quilt would be a really, really great gift for so-and-so. Is two or three weeks enough to do a quilt? Probably, but can you do it without losing your mind while you take care of everything else that's on your plate? That remains to be seen because that's exactly what I did. Would this have been a great idea to do like I don't know, in like October, even December, January? Yeah, but did I have the idea then? No. So here's what it says. It says there's always flowers for those who wish to see them. And it's surrounded by flowers. And then like I sewed on this kind of ombre border here. And then I sewed on another border, which is like the blue um, kind of watercolory floral pattern as well. And I've got this completely together. And now I have to quilted. I'm just gonna have to make it happen. And if it doesn't happen by the end of school, I'm just gonna have to get her address and deliver it over summer with like an IOU. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Um, yeah, I wish I could say this is the only time that I have done a, uh, a big, um, thing like that, but it's not. I do it quite often. And, um, I could also tell you that I'm working on it, but I don't know that there is a way to work on that part of your personality where you just like, come up with an idea and like it has to be done like now 
you know, like just hyper fixating. It has to be done now. I'll update you on that, how that goes, right? I'll update you. Okay, I'm gonna show you a sneak peek of this one that is still in the works because it's not done yet, but I had it on my long arm machine and I have been doing work on it for like a really long time. This is a hand pieced double wedding ring quilt. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is a king size quilt. It's ginormous. It has a ton of work to be done on it. And all of the work is this super detailed, like this shell pattern here, these little like dots here. And then I have to go back in and do the actual like rings on the quilt and the centers right there, the blue ones. So I ended up having to take it off of the frame so that I could work on some other quilts, but it is all basted down, it's all sewn, it just, it's probably gonna take another couple Saturdays to really finish it out, and I'm not sure I have another couple Saturdays in my schedule right now, so it's gonna be sitting here very patiently waiting until it is its turn again. It does change quite often, you guys, it does change. So, um, you know, sometimes I'll move them around or if it's seasonally or whatever, Ah, oh, I didn't show you my storage for the seasonal quilts. That's what I'm missing. Okay, so you guys know about this wardrobe piece right here and how I have my works in progress in here and um, other, I don't know, other quilts, right? So let's look in here and I'll show you some of the ones that I have in the works as well as the seasonal quilts that I have in here. Again, excuse the lighting, but it is what it is on a cloudy day like today. So there's my Halloween quilt. This is a quilt that I still need to do the binding on. So it is a work in progress. Oh, if I could tell you like how badly I want to get this quilt done, you have no idea, but it's just, it's, it's not on the to-do list right now, but it is a someday one. So these are like works in progress. Also ones that like, I just don't want displayed in my house right now because like, I love this quilt right here. It's a very thin, very patriotic quilt, but I pull it out closer towards like the 4th of July. I don't have it in my house constantly all the time because it's very, very scrappy. It's, it's very, um, wild and crazy, but like a really beautiful piece. So I don't keep that out all the time. Okay, this is a corner of my living room right here. And if you're going to ask me, do I buy too many dog toys? The answer is probably yes. But here is my other quilt ladder that I was telling you about. So this one I built myself. It's six feet tall and the sides I did kind of like a dip effect. So this is stained and that is painted white. And it holds uh, one, two, three, four quilts at the moment. It could hold five on that bottom rung, but I really don't put anything down there. So these are the ones that stay in here all the time. This one I did not make. I just absolutely love the style of quilting and I love to put it on display because you can see the work that went into that, right? Like it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And this one is an old one of mine. One of my very first quilts actually. And I, I love the simplicity of this one. So I also, as you can see, I did all kinds of things with my sewing machine. And I used all those fun extra stitches that come with the sewing machine on this quilt. I just did different ones on every single row and took my time with it. And it turned out really, really beautiful. So here is a full view of that one. You can see the sides on it are also in the hexagon type shape and um, the binding on that is a little bit difficult, but I think it's well worth it. And I still absolutely love all of the fabrics in this quilt as much as the day that I made them. This quilt that I keep down below it, we use this one on the couch a lot. So it doesn't always get put very nicely back on the frame, but you know, that's, that's more of a me problem, not an everybody else problem. But this is another one of my Helix quilts that I made with my class. So I think this was the very first class that I made this Helix pattern with the class and it turned out so lovely and like feminine and happy and wildflowery. The pattern is just mesmerizing to me. I love seeing all the different angles, the different colors, the different patterns. I'm gonna try and show you a little bit of this one. I gotta move my chair out of the way. But this was another really early quilt of mine, which is why I keep it on display. A lot of my more recent quilts have been gifts. So I don't have those on me, but these are the ones that I keep in the house. 
And this one is just, I loved this art gallery fabric right here. And then I used charm packs for like the rest of it. It was a couple different charm packs that I used, but it just works with half square triangles. And you can see that it is a very simple, but very colorful and very fun quilt. And then I also used, this was a Moda pack that had like lots of, um, you know, quilty sayings and things on it, you know? So I felt like it was very appropriate to use as I was really getting into my quilting journey and really falling in love with this craft. I'm so excited to show you this quilt. So ignore the dog toys in the back, but this quilt is a gift from a friend of mine and I love this quilt. It is an antique quilt. It is hand sewn and then quilted with like a stitch in the ditch quilt on it. And it is all of these gorgeous, gorgeous fabrics. And this quilt is huge too, by the way. It is so comfortable to snuggle up with. And the edging on this quilt, the whole border of this quilt right here, is this scalloped border that goes along with these apple core pieces. And so when you see the entire quilt you can first of all see how ginormous it is and then when you see the back of the quilt the back of the quilt is actually something entirely different and it was a different fabric that she found now i'm going to show you close up the cross stitching because it's definitely worth pointing out too look at the detail on this cross stitching isn't it beautiful and there's multiples of these all over the quilt back as you saw now these quilts the back and the front were not meant to go together, but I think they're perfect for each other. They are just so, so lovely. And you know, these are, these are big pieces. If you look at like my hand next to it, they're big cross stitch pieces. So they, they go together so lovely. And this will be a treasure of mine for a very, very long time. On the back of my dining chair right now is this quilt. And you may remember this quilt. I love, love, love this quilt. But if you look really closely right there, do you see that? That is friction pen that is currently still on this quilt. So again, I love my friction pens um, because they erase with heat and otherwise they're just gonna hang out on this quilt and it's been on there for a while. But I had the idea with this quilt that I would finish it mostly and then I would come back and I would do some um, just very light hand stitching and all of the big open blocks. And you can tell I did some machine stitching down the sides to get everything where it's nice and in place. But this stencil right here is a Sashiko stencil and I just need to go back with um, my hand sewing stuff and finish that up. All right, I'm just gonna keep going on <laughs> more recent quilt projects. I actually did the flying geese for these blocks a while back and then I, put them in a bag and I never sewed them together or quilted it or anything, but I don't know, on a wild hair one day, I pulled them out, actually put it together, sewed it together, and then put it on the long arm machine. And I really love the way this came out. You can see in like the full quilt picture that like, it's beautiful. It's so bright, it's so happy, it's so fun. It's very random. If you notice the binding on this, how modern and fun is that bright yellow binding with that black like a corner right how fun is that you may be asking yourself kristen that is so inventive and fun and i would never think to do that um here's a secret that yellow binding was left over from another project and i thought i had enough but i didn't so if you're like you know, giving yourself a hard time because you would never think to do that. I didn't either. The problem is I wasn't ready to give up and undo all of that sewn binding that I had already done <laughs> with the yellow. And I was really married to the yellow. Like I liked it. It's beautiful, right? So I just kept going and I substituted some black and it turned out like modern and fun and funky and I love the way that it turned out. The backing has this little bow fabric that actually goes with the line of fabric that is on the front of the quilt. Here's a close up of like the quilting. It's just this kind of like back and forth, um, not really like a hatch lines, but um, has these fun little diamonds in here as well. And then the middle of the back has the newsprint on it. 
Okay, still showing <laughs> more quilts here. This was a quilt top that I made in one of my quilting retreats. This is made with layer cakes and charm packs. So it's really fun uh, quilt and it's easy to do. And I love this fabric. It's very summer-like and you can see like the quilting kind of looks a little bit beach ball-y too. At least that's what I was going for with it. But uh, this is one, another one that I finished and I don't think I ever showed like the full um, progress on it. And then here's the whole quilt. So you can see the whole thing. And then the back of the quilt is actually this like kind of um, peachy salmon, bright orange color fabric with the prints, with the newsprint um, plus signs on it. And I got this fabric on super, super clearance. I love it. I love Carrie Bloomston, who is the artist of this fabric, but I got it on clearance for probably like $2.50 a yard. And I bought like so much of it. I bought everything they had left. So you may see that on a few more projects <laughs> later on down the line. Hey, so you saw in there where I had the quilt top is all pieced together and it's ready to be quilted and it's hanging on my design board so I can get as little wrinkles as possible in it. And now I'm gonna show you where the next step is, which is on my long arm machine. And I'm getting the, the whole process set up right now. So here we go. This is what is supposed to be my dining room <laughs> but it's not a dining room currently it is a long arm room and this is the backing obviously the wrong side of the backing but the backing that I'm going to use on that I've had this fabric for a while and I think it's a very sweet um kind of a you know with the globes it has kind of like an educator's undertone to the whole theme of the fabric but it's also very sweet it has flowers it has um, lots of different designs on it. And then because I did not have enough of this fabric, I had to pair it with some more floral fabric. So, you know, if you have to piece your backings, you do what you have to do. If you don't have enough of something, you make it work. After it's on the machine, after it's all rolled up and, uh, you know, ready for the next step, which is putting on the batting and then putting on the top and then getting this beautiful machine turned on and ready to be quilting. So I have a Millie right now. I have the Millie 30 and it is an APQS machine in case you're wondering. Like I said, fingers crossed, I can make it happen because I know that it would be really, really appreciated and really, really loved, but I'm also not against an IOU in a couple weeks late. Flexibility. That's what I'm working on. And if you pan like over a little bit from where my quilting machine is, I have this gorgeous little cafe table here, which you can't even see because this is a quilt that I just took off of it um, the other night and I still need to like trim it up and then put the binding on it. Um, but it is a jelly roll backing. Now this is a queen size quilt. It's ginormous and it's not very like folded really nice right now either but um i wanted to show you some of the quilting on it that turned out really really lovely this hot pink thread is like i'm gonna say it's my new favorite like ever i absolutely absolutely love this hot pink thread and then because i'm in the mood to show you some more detailed pictures of this quilt here is the quilt as a whole so you can see all of it in all of its glory yes it is a quilt top that i've had for a while but i um have really really slacked on my quilting so i got it done and um, i'm very happy to get it bound and get it finished and put on the beds in our home and um that is the most recent project that i have finished Whew. so there you have it. I have some other quilts in my house right now that are waiting to go to the long arm, but those are client quilts. They're not um, quilts that I have any part in other than the quilting, and I don't have permission to th show those, but hopefully in the future, I will be showing you how to give your quilt to me to finish the quilt off. Looking for a long armor that can help you get your quilt, make it beautiful, and finish it. So 
I will be releasing some more information on that in the upcoming months. I'm just taking local people at the moment. If you live in Houston, live in Texas, whatever, you're welcome to email me, but um, I will be opening that up to bigger audience uh, in the upcoming months and I'll keep you updated on that. Most of the quilts that I have made recently have gone to, as gifts to other people. I mean, um, you know, from what I don't show you on YouTube that I'm working on, I've had a couple more that have gone as gifts, but uh, that's that's about it. So you, I don't, I don't know. You, you guys see everything. So hopefully you got some ideas on like how you can store your quilts. Um, I would like to pull out like I do have my great, great grandmother's quilt um, that she made but it is very carefully tucked away right now because I need to do some repairs on it so that one is not out but um, when I do bring it out and I start doing the repairs on it and stuff I'll try and film some videos so that you can see that but um, I love the quilt ladders because they're they're easy to make they're beautiful to display and also they really don't take up a lot of room make it fit wherever you want it to fit. If you want to put it behind a chair or next to a table or something, it's very, very easy. Um, I also like to just, um, you know, roll up my quilts and, and put them next to the couch, lay them across the back of the couch. Oh, that's one I forgot to show you. Let me show you this one that lays on the back of the couch. I forgot about that one as I was showing you all of my old projects. Here's one that I keep on the back of the couch. And like I said, this kind of rotates, you know, it's not like, uh, this is the one we always keep on the back of the couch type of thing. It's just, it's uh, oh, puppy, puppy, no. Oh, okay, well, anyways, there's the dog. This is why we rotate them on the back of the couch anyways, because that is their favorite thing is to lay on the back of the couch with the quilts. So please ignore any messes that you find. Sometimes I like to leave it there. And then sometimes, you know, we move it around to like this corner. We have this like big, large sectional. There's the other dog. Like I said, this is why we rotate where we put them and uh, make sure that they stay nice and clean. Now, this one right here is a beautiful quilt. I love this quilt. It's so fun. It gave me an opportunity to use scrap fabric. It gave me an opportunity to try out different blocks. I learned that I'm not really fond of flying geese, but I'm not particularly upset by them either. Um, and I did a lot of half square triangles and fun different things arranging the half square triangles in this quilt. Okay, now I think you've seen all of them. I will probably find another one or two that I have like stashed somewhere, maybe. I don't know, it could happen, right? I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed kind of the, the tour of the, the different spaces and different ways that you can display your quilts and, and show them off and show off your hard work and be proud of it. If you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comment section down below and I will get back to you on that. I have loved sharing all of this with you. It makes my heart happy to have all of the beautiful things around in my home that I've curated and I've created and, um, you know, it just, it, it does. It brings me joy. So I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. I'm Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. Have a great day. Bye.